Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Sahana Shetty. I'm a consultant endocrinologist, professor and head at the Department of Endocrinology, Kasturba Medical College and Kasturba Hospital, Manipal Academy of Higher Education, Manipal. I'm here today to discuss about PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a very common disorder in women. I'm sure all of you had heard about PCOS among your relatives and friends or some of you may also be suffering from the problem. So let us try to understand briefly about this problem and what are the solutions. PCOS stands for polycystic ovary syndrome. Of course, the terminology reflects multiple cysts in the ovary, but the disease is much more uh, complex than just the cysts in the ovary. And let's try to understand that. First and foremost, why are we discussing this problem? Because PCOS is very common in women of reproductive age group. Now, if you look at the recent estimates, it says that one out of 10 women have this problem of PCOS and around 70% of them may not be aware of the condition. Hence, it becomes very important to be aware of the signs and symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. Now, PCOS can occur across the lifespan of women with different manifestations. We'll also understand that. Now, what are the main abnormalities we see in women with polycystic ovary syndrome is menstrual abnormalities and features of hormonal imbalance or features of androgen excess. Now, why do they get this problem? The main center of control is the hypothalamus, which is present in the brain. The hypothalamus secretes certain hormones, which then act on the pituitary gland. Pituitary again is an endocrine gland, which is present on the undersurface of the brain. And this secretes certain important hormones like LH and FSH, that is luteinizing hormone and follicular stimulating hormone, which acts on the ovaries to initiate the uh, menstrual cycles. So here uh, these hormones stimulate the ovaries for initiating ovulation and also secreting hormones like estrogen and progesterone which are responsible for the normal menstrual cycles. So this is a very regulated process. So whenever there is abnormalities in this hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis, then you get abnormalities in the menstrual cycles or the manifestations of polycystic ovarian syndrome. To add to this, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome is also a metabolic disorder where insulin resistance also plays a huge role. Now, we know that with the recent increase in this epidemic of obesity, there's young girls and women suffering from the problem of obesity. Now, obesity also leads to insulin resistance and insulin resistance is again one of an important uh, uh, pathophysiological factor which causes polycystic ovarian syndrome. So, in PCOS, you have abnormalities in the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis and also insulin resistance which brings about uh, abnormalities in the functions of the ovaries and thus abnormality in menstruation, ovulation and also hormonal disturbances. So the main uh, abnormalities in polycystic ovary syndrome is you have hormonal imbalance where you have imbalance in the estrogens and androgens and this could lead to menstrual irregularities and uh, oligoovulation that is uh, there may not be ovulations and this is the reason why there could be fertility problems in women with PCOS and there could be high androgen levels. Now high androgen levels or predominantly what we see is high testosterone levels could have uh, certain abnormal clinical presentations like they can have abnormal facial hair growth which is called as hirsutisms, they are more prone for acne, there could be an androgenic alopecia or hair loss so which are again the clinical manifestations of PCOS. So these are the underlying abnormalities in women with PCOS. So let us understand what are the clinical presentations or the problems women with PCOS present with. Now this would vary depending on the age of an individual. So in adolescence often the problems is menstrual abnormalities where they may not get cycles on time. Often the cycles are prolonged. They might be getting menstrual cycles once in 45 days, 60 days or 90 days and sometimes once in six months. And when there is a delayed cycles it could be a heavy bleeding which is also called as menorrhagia. So they have oligo menorrhea and menorrhagia. The second problem they could have is the features of high androgen that is they could have abnormal facial hair which is a concern which is also called as hirsutisms and they are also prone for acne and androgenic alopecia or hair loss. 
So women in the young adulthood, again in addition to these menstrual problems, hirsutism and acne, uh, they can also have problems in conceiving. So infertility is a concern in young adult women or women in the reproductive age group. In addition to this, a very important problem which uh, is seen across the spectrum from adolescent to middle age or elderly is obesity. So uh, weight gain and features of insulin resistance are again important manifestations. So uh, they often complain of uh, this hyperpigmentation of skin around the neck which is known as acanthosis nigricans and this is a feature of insulin resistance. So, and so in addition to menstrual abnormalities, uh, hirsutism, acne, uh, obesity and insulin resistance are additional clinical presentations in, in adolescent and adult and middle-aged women. Now, with the age advancement, the main concerns shifts towards metabolic problems because I said before that PCOS is a metabolic problem. We also call uh, consider it um, under metabolic syndrome where it is linked to lifestyle and obesity. So women with PCOS are uh, prone for uh, other components of metabolic syndrome like diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol problems and also are more prone for heart diseases. So this would be a concern in middle age and of course this concern would then for further extend uh, in an elderly woman who had a history of PCOS uh, in, in, in the in, in young adulthood or middle age. Thus, these women would be more prone for diabetes, hypertension, fatty liver, cholesterol problems and heart diseases. So PCOS, the manifestation is seen across the lifespan of a woman and the manifestation in different age would be different. So that was about the symptoms and the concerns of PCOS and also to some extent I also covered the complications of PCOS in the later life. Now, how do we diagnose these conditions? So when women come with menstrual abnormalities as the prime presentations, there could be several different causes for this. Not all menstrual abnormalities are PCOS. So we need clinically assess the patients and also test to rule out other disorders. For example, thyroid disorders can also present with menstrual abnormalities. So we need to evaluate and rule out thyroid disorders. Prolactin related problems like high prolactin levels can also present with features like polycystic ovary syndromes. Steroid excess state is also called as Cushing syndromes or some of the adrenal disorders also called as congenital adrenal hyperplasia also can present with manifestations which are similar to PCOS. So when we evaluating patients with PCOS, we do this test. First of all, we clinically evaluate to see for the features of other diseases and do certain tests to rule out the other conditions. Once we rule out other conditions and then we also look at the androgen levels, the important hormones we test would be testosterone to see the levels. Uh, sometimes we also do an LH FSH uh, in addition to doing tests to rule out other disorders. Once we diagnose this, we also screen for the complications associated. I said metabolic syndrome uh, is, 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 is often associated. So thus we would screen for diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol problems in women with PCOS. So that's about evaluating women with PCOS. US. An ultrasound also helped to kind of confirm our findings where you could see a polycystic appearance in on ultrasound. Again, a word of caution here that many times in adolescent girls, they could have polycystic appearance of ovaries and ultrasound without features of PCOS. So just if you have a polycystic ovaries uh, on ultrasound but you do not have any features, uh, especially in adolescent, it may not be PCOS. It is a clinical diagnosis. So it is the diagnosis is made after considering the clinical presentations, the lab parameters and then of course maybe the ultrasound would contribute. But again, we need to know that it's a clinical diagnosis. When we come to the treatment aspects of PCOS, we need to understand most importantly that PCOS is a lifestyle disorder in addition to hormonal abnormalities. So it is kind of a spectrum. In some women, it may be predominantly hormonal abnormalities. In some women, it could be predominantly obesity and uh, insulin resistance, which is contributing to PCOS. So whatever is the cause when there is lifestyle modifications in predominantly in the form of healthy eating practices and increasing physical activity and exercises, which could be anything. It could be aerobics, it could be yoga, it could be any find or assistance training. So whenever they do, when there is a good amount of uh, uh, weight reduction by lifestyle modification in the form of nutritional modification and physical activity, we find significant improvement in symptom of PCOS. So not only there is reduction in weight, uh, since the, the signs of insulin resistance come down, uh, the, the menstrual abnormalities improve uh, and then over long term the other symptoms of PCOS would also improve. So, so, so lifestyle modification is the most important aspects of treatment of PCOS and many a times uh, it could also be reversible just with lifestyle modifications. 
Now, in those who have severe manifestations or symptoms related to PCOS, we need to treat the underlying symptoms. For example, if there is significant menstrual abnormalities, then we need to give hormones to treat that. Especially if there is a significant delay in menstrual cycles, then we might have to intervene with the hormonal treatment to correct the symptoms. Uh, and then in those patients who, who have hirsutism, because again, that is uh, uh, disturbing to many of the patients. So those patients, in addition to hormonal treatment and lifestyle modifications, may need some cosmetic treatment to, to reduce this symptoms of hirsutism and also the treatments for acne. And then when it comes to infertility, again, there are certain treatments which could help them in this process. So overall, what we need to understand that PCOS is a metabolic disease as well in addition to hormonal problems. Uh, it's important for us to be aware of signs and symptoms of PCOS. And like I said, the symptoms of PCOS could, could start much earlier in an younger age itself. So having a good lifestyle right from the beginning, uh, even in a school going age would help us to prevent PCOS to a large extent. So it's very important to encourage uh, uh, healthy lifestyles in terms of uh, healthy eating and physical activity activity to avoid the metabolic components, to avoid obesity and thus avoid polycystic ovary syndromes. And those who have polycystic ovary syndrome, it's important to get evaluated and take measures for lifestyle modifications and appropriate treatment to avoid a complication of PCOS. Yeah, so I'd like to summarize that it's important to be aware of the signs and symptoms of PCOS and in those who have the problems uh, uh, to get evaluated and take appropriate measures in terms of lifestyle modifications and treatment to avoid the complications associated with PCOS. Thank you.